What's going on, everyone? It's Rob and Johnny. Welcome to episode 50 of we the MM Arcade podcast. We 50 episodes, bro. Half a century. Let's go. Oh, we're, we're only halfway this, now to 100 episodes. This is the the big 5-0 special. Yeah. That's going to go for about 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so there much planned. <laughs> there is there's so much. We've got things going crazy up in here. We've got heaps of things planned. You'll have to watch the whole thing to find out what it is. <laughs> it's an unfortunate week for our 50th episode because there's not much going on in the world of UFC because we didn't have any fights this weekend, right? Yeah, I, I find it hard to – like. It, remember, it became um, it was a surprise to me that they said that you're doing anything for your 50 episode. I reckon we do something for our hundredth. Yeah, yeah. You know, what I mean, I feel like 100. You know, century triple digits. That's pretty cool. A hundred's cool. more of a big deal. I, I agree. It, like when you reach 50k on the channel versus 100k subs, I feel like a hundred's always the big deal because you get the award and everything. So I agree with that. I, I, I would that be lot. very happy with 50k subs though. So if you are new to the channel, absolutely <laughs> hit, that, hit that button. <laughs> Hit that button. <laughs> tell your friends about us. <laughs> Please do subscribe. But because we missed out on talking uh, about the last fight night where Kaio Bahayu defeated Jared Kennedy, we will talk about that. We will do our predictions as well for the upcoming fight night, Gilbert, Gilbert Burns versus Sean Brady. Mm -hmm. But as, as, a, and as always, a bunch of games news and what we've been playing and everything. So mm -hmm. please do like, please do subscribe. Rob, let's talk about it. Last weekend, we had Kaio Bahayu defeat Jared Kennedy via decision. Keen to know what you thought. I think you did a, a talk with Submission Radio about what you thought about the fight and everything. But mm. for, for this podcast, what were your thoughts on the fight and everything that went down? Um, well, I guess I don't love pumping the tires up of like potential competition. I know and, you always struggle to well, talk about middleweight because yeah, they're because essentially like your they're competitors. All, they're the enemy and the amigos, <laughs> right? It's like they... They're the guys on the other side of the fence. Like, screw yeah, those guys. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care how well you perform. Screw you. <laughs> but I, I will say, and I have like, and don't, I have nothing against any of the middleweights personally. Yeah. It's strictly business. Like, we're, we're two guys going to a war zone to, to do our jobs, you know, put mm. on the line. Um, but I will say, I think he deserved, he deserves to be in the top five. I think that, yep. that performance put him, I th I'm pretty sure it put him into the top five. He is fifth uh, now, yeah. Uh, uh, as well as like it stood out that he deserves to be there. I think mm. he's, a, he's a good fighter. He's got a very well-rounded skill set. He seems to be on a, on a confidence roll now. And and we've seen it several times. It's funny because of how long I've been in the the game for. We've seen yeah. new errors like come and roll over. It's funny that I've lived through like three of them or so. Dude, right? that's been a big talking point for the past week. A lot of people are saying that you've been around longer than most others, if not all. Like you are still in there in that top five range, top three range. Yeah. Fighting fighting for my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> but it's crazy to say. It's awesome. Yeah, but it, it's cool. It's good to see these new yeah. young guys coming up. They're, they're stylistically putting on fun fights. Mm. And that was, that, was a, that was a fight that was not only fun, but you saw a lot of grit. You saw a lot of things that are needed to be in that top five, like that, that determination, yeah. that dig, that wrestling defense, that willingness to kind of mix it up if you have to, that, that willingness to go the distance when you're in round four, both tired, mm. taking shots, you know, and, and, and still fighting for it. So, you know, congratulations to him, honestly. I'm yeah. happy to see him in the top five. And, uh, yeah, you know. So <laughs> that's all look, the nice we're, we're going to talk about. more about it. I know you're struggling. We're, we're going to talk a little bit more. I, I do want to shift gears slightly before we talk more about Kayo. Jared Cannon here, right? Mm. Um, I thought, of course, let's exclude that last round because that was a tough round for him. But given everything, he still performed very well. This was a very competitive yeah. fight. Jared is... Definitely still like top 10 worthy. I know he dropped to the seventh spot. I thought that was a little bit harsh because now he's below Marvin Vittori for some reason. But it was very competitive. Dude hits like a truck. And he was competing, going neck and neck with Kaio for the vast mm. majority of that fight. Um, but he is getting to the stage where he's taking a lot more damage in each of his fights. We kind of yeah. saw, saw it when he versed Nasadine. Of course, we saw it when he versed Kaio. Um, how do you feel about 
how Jared is going and the stage of his career and the fact that he's 40 now. Do you think this might be the start of his decline or, or not? It's hard to say. It really is. Because um, I, I, I honestly, I see him putting just about anybody underneath the top 10 in, a, you know, in the dirt. Right? Smashes him. He, yeah, he's, he is a really scary gatekeeper right now. Yeah. And uh, whether or not he has a, a another rising or decline, you know, if we just kind of look at numbers, odds are he's kind of hit his ceiling, his track, right? Yeah. As you said, he's 40 going on, right? Um, it has taken a lot more damage. We've seen steadily the the damage increasing. But, mate, he looked great for 40. <laughs> Dude, I, I, Dude, I hope I look like that when I'm 40, right? <laughs> Dude, Dude's still a killer out there. Like I said, anyone below the top 10, he, he coffins. Like, I reckon he could be like a top five gatekeeper in my opinion just because uh, he's struggling with those guys above him, but he's beaten a lot, most of the guys below him. Mm. It's, it's, it's a tricky position. He, unfortunately, he's 40 and there's no easy fights. <laughs> yeah. And he's getting older and there's just younger dudes coming up, appearing out of nowhere, you know, mm. like Pokemon trainers and ready <laughs> ready to fight because they have nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing to lose. So, yeah. He's in a tricky position. I, there is only turbulent water ahead of him. But For sure. I think, and from my interactions with him speaking, um, he loves fighting. He's a true martial artist and he loves the journey. So I don't know what he does, but I can see him just kind of doing his thing until his body doesn't yeah. allow him anymore. I think the middleweight division <clears throat> is better off with him in it because mm. he, you know he's always going to put on an exciting fights. He always competes. I mean... Like, let's think about it in perspective. He was fifth at 40 years age, going five rounds with one of the yep. biggest up-and-comers in the middleweight division, who a lot of people have seen. He's just a straight killer, Kaya Bahia. So, like, give him all due respect. I still think he's going to be back. Whether he makes a march towards the title, yeah, probably not. But I still think he can be a, a big name in, in the middleweight division in that top 10, putting on fun fights. Yep. Um, but switching tack to, to Kaya a little bit, so he is fifth now in the division. Um, what what do you what do you think about like you know what he's been saying about initially he called out Drickus Duplessis he kind of backtracked on that and now he's saying he he wants to fight someone like Israel Adesanya next. How do you feel about that for his next opponent? Um, yeah, I think that's a great fight for him. Um, yeah, it's a it's a tricky fight. I, I think the guy. The guy's riding the wave, right? He's trying to get a title shot riding yeah. the wave or f ride the wave into the next fight that'll get him a title shot. Yeah. So like that, Adesanya is obviously the next pick after Drickus. Mm. Um, he's doing the right things. He's, he's just uh, he's doing his thing. I don't know. There, there's, there's, he's in the top five now. There's no easy fights. There's yeah. no easy fights. And I, and I feel like if you're in the headspace where you pick fights strategically because of how you fight, like stylistically, mm. you're setting yourself up for failure, in my opinion. But that's like a personal philosophy yeah. on fighting rather than facts, right? Um, yeah, I'd love to see him fight Adesanya. Adesanya's in a funny position where if he wants to keep fighting, he needs to fight someone who's not a belt holder right now. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, either Izzy fights Kayo or maybe he fights the winner of um, of Nasadine and Brendan Allen. Mm -hmm. the, the middleweight division's looking very interesting right now. Yeah, like really after the, the Drickers fight with Izzy, after this Kayo fight, things are heating up, man. Can I just get your general perspective on, on what you think about the middleweight division now? Because it's at the top <laughs> of everyone's minds at the moment, especially with straight after the Drickers fight, straight after the Kayo Bahia fight. Uh, it's a great time to be a middleweight. There's so much movement. There's a lot of people out there. But mm. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you, Johnny. All right? I barely know who's in the top 10. <laughs> like, my, like, I really do. I, my eyes are on Chemayev, yeah. who I don't even know what his rank is. Chemayev is like 9 or 11, something. I, 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 yeah. yeah. See, weird. I don't know. So my, my eyes and focus is solely on him and then on Drickus. Like yeah. that's just how my brain operates. Like they're the targets. Everything else doesn't matter until you know you're emailed the the, the contract and yeah. you know you see the the name involved across from yours, right? So yeah, it's yeah, it's fun. It's a fun time to be a to be a middleweight. Like, but then it's always been fun. It doesn't. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just it just gets funny when there's like stalemates and stallings. 
and, mm. and, and time offs and whatnot. But it's it's a good time to be a middleweight. There's a lot of looks like we're getting a new wave, like a new era of middleweights. Mm. And I'm interested to see how they mix with the old guard. Yeah, I, I do want to share this with you. Feel free to answer it, respond to it. You don't need to. But this is what Kayo had to say about your upcoming fight with Hamzat. He was saying, I think it's a very tough fight for you because Hamzat's a very great wrestler, says he's the best wrestler in the division. Um, and we saw how we dominated Kamara Usman. I would push back on that, but I'll continue. Um, I think uh, Rob thinks that Hamza is going to get tired or something like that, and he believes the fight goes to Hamza and that he's going to dominate you in the wrestling game on the ground. But you're a champion, so cannot doubt our champion. It's definitely going to be a fun fight. More or less, that's what he said. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you have any thoughts about it? I don't know. <laughs> they used to train together. They trained together for a little bit. So yeah, him like, supporting his teammates. He, yeah. He's pumping Jemayev's tires up a lot and Jemayev's in his division as well, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, True. If you're, <laughs> if you're freaking out already, dude, like yeah. it's come for I know Jemayev is a good wrestler, okay? It's so no you, surprise, right? Yeah, yeah, so it's no surprise in the gym. I'm I'm wrestling so much. If he beats me, like dominates me wrestling, and I've done everything in the book, mm. everything, and, I, and, I, and I've I've done absolutely ticked every box, no stone unturned in the gym. Then what do you do? You know what do you yeah. do? But you can bet your bottom dollar that I am training like an animal right now on the mats. I am sweating and bleeding and leaving it all there <laughs> in preparation for this fight, and I'm coming into this fight to leave it all there. I don't oh, expect yeah. him to get tired or anything else. I expect him to come out aggressive and to be super scary in the wrestling, to be very strong. But I just think I've been in those waters before. You mm. know? I know how to tread. I'm good in there. I can. I I, I am the best middleweight in the world. Mm. And, uh, you know, I'm beating him will prove that. And yeah. I look forward to it, right? I look forward to it. Dude, the card that you're on, by the way, every time I look at it, <clears throat> it looks so bloody good. There are <laughs> yeah. so many good fights, man. Yeah. It's gonna be like right up there with UFC 300, which yeah, it's a I, I, I might be a stress to say. So keen for the for the main event. Oh, it's gonna be so good, brother. <clears throat> because you, I don't know if you and I are gonna have the actual opportunity to do predictions for it, right? Because you're gonna be there yeah. in the preceding 12 days or whatever, right? Yeah. Uh, what what we'll do is we'll 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 do it like a couple of weeks early, yeah. three weeks early, and we'll just just shelf it. <laughs> until right. until until it's time to post it up because you know me as the closer we get the harder it gets to, to put these episodes together for sure so we'll we'll bank some yeah well let us know what you thought about Kaya versus Jared in the comments below next up as I mentioned we are going to do our predictions for this weekend's upcoming fight night Gilbert Burns against Sean Brady in the main event Burns of course coming off two losses against. JDM, shout out JDM, and Bilal Muhammad, 22 wins, 7 losses. Before that, he beat, beat Miss Masvidal and Magni. And then Sean Brady, 16-1. and one. He just submitted Kelvin Gastelum, but he did lose to Bilal Muhammad due to TKO. Now, that loss has kind of, you know, developed nicely because now Bilal is the champion. But, Rob, can I get your thoughts and predictions on Gilbert Burns versus Sean Brady? Yeah, you know, like, obviously, in... Gilbert's last fight, I was going like I love Gilbert Burns, love the way he fights, love watching, big fan. But obviously, I'm going to go for the Aussie just because yeah. you know he's one of us. And uh, I will say, <clears throat> he was doing Jack, well. Jack was probably losing that fight up until yep. the knockout. Like he was probably losing that fight, and then he he landed that knee, you know, that never quit attitude, and and yeah. he took a win, and a win's a win. It's beautiful. Beautiful mm. to see a win like that as well. But Burns wasn't wasn't slow in that fight. He looked good. I um he did get tired by the third round. I don't yeah. know what that's a result of. Maybe it was very hard to keep Jack down, or maybe conditioning wasn't as easy in the camp as it's been previously. I don't know. Never seen him that like we let's say Gil Burns has never been a Volkanovsky in the in the octagon. Like he's never mm. had that sort of gas tank, right? But he's he's been better than we saw in that fight. So I'm curious to see how that lines up against Brady, who, who you know, historically he's, he's he's been pretty good. He's been pretty like he's got a lot of stay power, right? Yeah. But Gilbert also hits like a truck. <laughs> and, and look, we saw what happened with with uh, Bilal Muhammad. Bilal mm-hmm. Muhammad was able to to rock 
uh, Brady, which, look, man, I, I know that he, Bilal's the champ now, right? And he dominated Leon Edwards, but he's not exactly known for his phenomenal striking. He's not exactly known for knocking people out left, right, and mm-hmm. center. So if Bilal could do that, Gilbert Burns has every opportunity to do that as well. 100%. Right? 100%. 100%. Yeah. But the, the interesting thing is that it sounds like these two guys are ready and willing to have a bit of a, a grappling match. Um, there were some words to that effect. Gilbert Burns was pretty excited by that prospect. Th- this could be just a grappling showcase and we see who does better on the ground with their wrestling. But I found this interesting stat though. Did you know that Gilbert Burns has never been submitted? So I know that Brady is obviously very, very good with his submissions, but never been submitted before. I, I think this is going to go to decision in my opinion to Sean Brady. I think Gilbert Burns is one of the best MMA grapplers of all time. He's absolutely he, like he's phenomenal yeah. at grappling, period. Mm. But in terms of MMA grappling, I think he's one of the best of all time. Like, dude, there, if this like, was Davey prime Myers. Burns against Sean Brady, I, I have no doubt that Burns would win it. But coming off of two losses, he is 38. It, it's going to be about who has more in the tank, in yeah, my opinion. Yeah, but like the loss against Bilal, his shoulder, he tore his shoulder cuff or whatever. That's right. And yeah, like yeah. He, it was like, it was an ugly fight. It was in the first mm. he did it, and it was an ugly fight from then on. Okay, and yeah. he had also rushed getting into that fight. He took he took it like four weeks or three weeks straight after. You know, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. I probably am, <laughs> but I know it was I know it was a quick turnaround though. Mm. And then with the the JDM fight, he was winning until he, he was took winning the knee to the dome, right? Yeah. <laughs> but he was winning. So like I thought he was looking good up until that point. So yeah. I don't know my. My money's on Burns, okay, but crazier things have happened. No, you. So you are right. Uh, so he beat Jorge uh, via decision on the eighth of April, twenty twenty three, and literally just less than a month later, sixth of May, he fights Bilal. So mm-hmm. it was a very quick turnaround. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. you need to consider that in context. But I, I, I really want to to go with Burns on this one, but I think Sean Brady does get it done. But there's every chance that he gets rocked because Burns has hit hard. Yep. Let's see how it goes. Let us know your predictions, of course, in the comments below. And finally, just have a couple of pieces of UFC news to talk about because it has been a slow week when it comes to watching actual fights. Now, Bilal Muhammad, after he beat Leon Edwards, he became the champion. He was like, I want to fight by the end of the year. I want to be an active champion. I'll fight whoever, whether it's, you know, Kamara Usman, whether it's Shavkat Rachmanov. But now he's saying that have those two fight and see who the number one contender is, which would probably put him back to next year to fighting again. Can I ask you, what do you think would be the better option? Either him fighting Shavkat Rachmanov for the title or Usman fighting Shavkat for the number one contender spot? Is Shavkat fighting Usman? Isn't that fight happening? Who's Shavkat fighting? I don't think it's confirmed yet. Shavkat. I don't think anything is confirmed right now. So he said here that he was claimed that he was offered the title shot, but Bilal declined due to timing issues. They still haven't confirmed anything yet. Mm, okay. I don't know. I think after Usman stepped in to fight, what's his name, uh, on like a week's notice. Hamza. I, I, yeah. Jamai, I, I feel like that is a lot of balls in his court. I, I feel like that's a lot of weight. That's pretty ballsy. It was it was a pretty good fight. I don't know. I, I can't say him. I can't. I wouldn't be terrible terribly upset if he didn't get a title shot. Okay. So wait, are are you saying that the UFC is going to do him a solid? I I remember that you've just given me kind of a memory unlock moment here. I remember straight after that fight in the ring, Dana went up to Usman and said, "Thank you for doing that for yeah. coming in on short notice." No. Yeah. And you know what Dana's like? We've seen what happens with Stipe. He wants to give Stipe that shot. You're, you're, you might be correct. He just might book Usman against Bilal. Usman came in like a week, four days or five days out of the yeah. fight and just like stepped up to fight Jemai. Like it was such a crazy And did really fight. well. And did really well. He looked yeah. really good. I don't think he's fought since then, has he? No, he's not. And, yeah, and he obviously so. fought a class above. Like, he's not a middleweight. Yeah, he's exactly. not a real middleweight. So, um, yeah, it's hard to say. I can see them giving it to Usman because of that. Mm. But Usman hasn't been in for a long time. I could also say, I can also see them fighting Shavkat because of that reason, for that reason. But I can't see UFC doing Bilal too much of a solid in terms of, like, 
<laughs> matching up his hard <laughs> hardest opponents up to you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. i don't think he's earned that 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 credit strip yet yeah that's fair like if i'm looking at this from the usv perspective they're just trying to make the best fights that's going to bring the most amount of money in i know we talk about meritocracy and everything but clearly they've been leading away from that the next piece of news that we're going to talk about is Alex Pereira against Khalil Roundtree. He's not fighting Ankalaev, so clearly there's more at play here. I would not be surprised if they, if they pit Usman against Bilal mm. for the title. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Speaking of, by the way, what do you think about Pereira fighting Khalil Roundtree? I don't think we've talked about that on the podcast. Oh, mate, I don't know. I, I, I don't hate Khalil's... I don't know where that fight came out of, <laughs> for one. It's going to be a banger, like, though. Yeah, man. I like... I like <laughs> Like that's going to be a sick kickboxing fight, man. Hell yeah. <laughs> that's what yeah. we're getting. We're just getting a kickboxing fight with small gloves. <laughs> like, I'm, and I'm all for it. I'm all yeah. for it. I, like, I, I don't know which, which side I would take, honestly. Like, mm. I think I'd have to lean towards Pereira, but I can't, I can't say Khalil wouldn't, can't get it done. Because Khalil's yeah. dangerous, especially when he's on. I feel like he's a bit of a hot and cold sort of fella. Mm. Um, but when he's on, he looks so dangerous. Yeah. And, and there's been a big talking point about how everybody that seemingly goes up against Pereira, they talk about how I'm not, I'm not going to wrestle with him. I'm just going to stand there and trade. Uncle I have said it. Kilo, Kilo Roundtree said it. But at least when Roundtree says it, like he's never been a fighter that shoots for takedowns. I don't yeah. believe he's ever shot a takedown once in the UFC. Shoot takedown. Like, so <laughs> why, why would he change his done. approach? Like do, exactly. that doesn't make sense. Exactly. This is going to be a kickboxing fight with small gloves. I can't wait. And that's why the UFC is booking it. It's going yeah. to be a straight bang. And you mentioned though, you like you don't know how this fight came along. I think I did. I went through the process in a video recently. But if you go down that list of light heavyweights, right? I mean, Pereira has beaten. A lot of those top guys, like he, he's beating Prohaska, he's beating Hill, he's beating um, uh, Jan. But that Jan flight was obviously much closer. I thought there was a chance that they would book that. But then you keep going down the list, and then Ankalai was already set to fight Rakic. So Khalil Roundtree was the best. When you follow that process, mm. he was the best next matchup. Yeah. So I don't hate it. Yeah. But that is the UFC news for this week. Next up, we've got the gaming news. And the biggest release of the week by far was probably next to Wukong, and we will talk about Wukong in the next section, trust me, was <laughs> Star Wars Outlaws. Uh, it is, like, reviewed decently well, man. Like, 77 on Open Critic, the last that I checked. Positives, it's a, the very first open-world Star Wars game. It feels like a Star Wars game. The environments are great. And I can attest to that. I put some time into it. It's a beautiful looking game. The reputation system is cool. That little companion that you have, Nyx, that helps you helps you do stuff and distract enemies and whatever. That's pretty cool. But the negatives, like the combat, is feels a little bit dated, and I agree with this. It feels a bit a uh, bit janky and, and dated a little bit. The stealth segments didn't really set the world on fire for me. They're pretty simple. The vehicle controls they're pretty tough to control, and the story isn't all too exciting. Are you? Do you even like Star Wars? First question I need to ask you. Uh, have you ever been a fan of Star Wars, the movies, or otherwise? No, no, I haven't. Oh, yeah. Why is that? I liked. You know, what's that? What, what's that? That game, Star Wars Battlefield Two. Oh, that Battlefront. Was fun. Yeah, Battlefront Two. Yeah, that was yeah. fun. But like, yeah, I'm just not a Star Wars fan. I don't know. I've never even seen the movies. Not but, even uh, one movie. No, I've seen bits and pieces. Maybe, maybe I have seen it. But I can't remember the whole thing. I don't know. That's would, crazy, would, would man. Not even kid. one proper Star Wars movie. But, but I've, I've like looked it up heaps. Like I've yeah. gone, I've gone down the rabbit hole of like who's the strongest Jedi is. <laughs> like, <laughs> like oh, why can't they use this power? Like what can they do? I don't know. I've gone down. You're that. looking up the law before even watching the movies, or let alone playing the games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, because he, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but I don't think it's for me. I don't think yeah. it's for me. There's been nothing. You, you know what it is? I'm a very much a, a single player sort of guy. Like I like seeing a single character go throughout his adventure and his quest and him get all the glory or not, but it's him. Right. My Star Wars has so many characters, so many good guys and bad guys. And and you know what really kills me? And I think it has to do with my, the way my brain works, but mm. I can't go start in the middle and then go backwards to dated, to go back to forwards to like – they didn't release in the I order, get it. and it kills me. It kills mm. me. Ruined my experience. I, no. 
no. As well as like you, you don't get to make you create your character, so it's not a game for me. I don't think. Well, and it's not even just that you can't create the character. People have an issue with the main character, um, K Vess. Like she's just not all too compelling in a lot of people's opinions um i i didn't mind her like i i, I thought she was funny i enjoyed the fact that this was a big star wars game but i i would very well and truly say that this is a game for star wars fans like if you want to play an open world star wars game play it wait for a sale if you want to but if you're not into star wars it's a regular ubisoft game and you might like that and you might not like that you know what i mean mm-hmm. um but I, I i thought it was decent and i and i feel like those review scores are completely fair and um, finally, I, I want to talk about Wukong, bro. I can't, I can't wait because I need to convince you to play this bloody game. Yep, yep. Can I do that? Maybe. <laughs> you sh- it's, it's literally right off your alley. All right, what we're watching, playing, and reading. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to convince you to play Wukong. So Wukong, essentially, right? It, it, it was developed by Game Science, by the way, uh, who, who's, who's based in China. It's out on PS5, out on PC. There is an Xbox version uh, planned for later. It's sold like over 10 million units already. It's done stupidly well. One of the most played games on Steam of all time. And it's essentially based, and I'm going to try and do it justice. I have notes here. It's based on the Chinese novel um, called Journey to the West. It's actually technically a sequel. It's based after that. You play this uh, as this monkey called the Destined One. You've got to find these relics and restore Sun Wukong can, to power. Pause for one second. Yeah. Can, can, you, can you make the monkey look a certain way? No. Okay, so th- this, I know you're not going to like this, right? But let me, let me at least try and convince you why you would still enjoy this game. Because he- here's the problem. I want to I want to talk about stuff with this game, and I know you're going to straight away compare it to Souls games. You're going to compare it to Dark Souls. You're going to compare it to Elden Ring, where you can change your character's looks, but just, tr- just trust me, I think you'll enjoy it, all right? So it, it, it is a more, like, casual, easier version of, of a Souls game. I wouldn't call it a Souls game. It's more an action RPG, but it takes a lot of Souls-like elements. So, you know, you have a stamina meter. There's a heavy emphasis on dodging. Every, like, 10 meters that you walk, there's a new uh, boss that that you can fight, and they all have cool designs. They all have different powers. Um, Your primary weapon is a staff. That can be upgraded. Different combat stances that you can muck around with as well. As you fight, you accumulate focus points and you can do combos and charge attacks, which are pretty cool. You heal, obviously, and, and the potion operates very similarly to Elden Ring. You can cast spells like freezing your opponent, creating a mist decoy. You can even transform into different animals, like a wolf that has like a flaming glaive, which is freaking sick. For how long? Uh, it's temporary, but it recharges. So those transformations are temporary, but they recharge. There's even like spirits that you can capture. There's one that I love where it just tr- turns you into this giant dude with this big head. It just slams on an enemy and does a ton of damage. That's a lot of fun. Mm. And the exploration is freaking awesome, man. Like it's yeah. very similar to Did you to say there's only one, one type of weapon? Yeah, it can be upgraded and that's the biggest slight compared to a game like Elden Ring, which there are tons of different weapons yeah. and play styles. It's just the staff that can be upgraded. Okay. But... Exploration's good. A lot of secrets to be found. As you level up, you can you know allocate your points accordingly, and you can respec whenever you want. So it's much are more there, forgiving in that regard. Uh, like there's there's the spells that you can equip, and the yeah kind of skills as you, as you allocate your points as you level up, right? So you can do better with certain attack styles. You, you can pick yeah. the the smash stance, which is more combat heavy up close. Um, you can get armor as well and relics to help you in, in battle. I think it's a pretty good game. It very much feels like a Souls game, but it's not quite like a Souls game. Mm-hmm. The yeah. only slight that I have on it is that there is no mini map. There's no map to tell you where you're going and what you're exploring. And I get a little bit confused as to where I've been and the stuff that I've tried to explore because there's so many secrets to discover. But I still think you would like it, man. I really do. Combat-wise, I think you'll have a lot of fun with it, even though you can't customize your character. You know what? It reminds me very much uh, from what I've been listening about, uh, to. It's like mm. very. You ever played Neo Two? I I know the comparison that you're making though. I haven't or, played or it, but Nio? I know. Yeah, Neo. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, it said Neo, but it's spelled Neo. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it looks cool. Like, I don't know. I. I if there's, I don't think so, dude. 
<laughs> but what? Like, I, I, I don't. Because if, if, if you like something to separate me from every other player that plays it, like how do I, how do I create my own path? What separates That's my playthrough from your playthrough? You know what I mean? Why that, does that necessarily need to be a, is that just what you want in a game? In yeah, a, I, I want, <laughs> I want my experience to be my experience. I don't want to, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't mm. know. I guess, I guess if you look at the big scope of things, none of it really matters, but then. No, yeah, it, the, the, the uniqueness in your playthrough right. co- probably comes as to where you're allocating your sparks, essentially like your yeah, level but up there's, points. Yeah, but there's no weapons. There's no skills. There's No, there, well, there's spells. There's different kinds of spells, and you can only have one in each slot, so you have to be unique in that regard. You know what I mean? Do you use the, the spell that freezes enemies, or do you use the one that creates a ring of fire and... and has but you can only effects. be one, so you can't even build your characters to be like a spellcaster. No, it, and that, that's that's why I don't think it's necessarily for you in that regard. But the the game, the combat is fun. The combat looks wild. I, it I just, looks I it's so much the, fun. I saw some of the pictures and 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 video clips just saying it looks it looks wild. Yeah, I just I don't think there's enough to hold me. Like there are Fair. there are some things I'm just OCD about and being able to create characters <laughs> and and build characters. Like I can even get around not creating my character just if there's a lot of build options. Like for instance, um, mm. what's it called? Diablo and Path of Exile. You can't create your Fair. character there. You can't dress them up the way you want to. Oh, I think you can in Diablo Four, but you couldn't mm. prior to this. And same with Path of Exile. But what separated you was your build. And mm. they heavily emphasize that. And then you obviously the com- cosmetics and everything. So, mm. yeah, I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's uh, f- for me. I tried. I tried to convince him. You did. It's a fun game. Yeah. I, will, I, I, I don't want the idea of walking around just starves as well. Like, I don't want, I, don't, I want to be able to use my own weapons. Like, I want to, I want to, I want to make my character. Mm. I don't want to be the monkey dude. <laughs> I mean, but, but that's probably, I think, what makes the game unique in that regard. In that, like, we've just had a game like yeah. Elden Ring where you can have so many different weapons, yeah. right? And your playstyle completely changes. But I kind of like the fact that, like, no, you're a monkey that uses a staff. Yeah. How interesting can we make this yeah. gameplay, right? I, I think there's, and I think a lot of people like games that put you on rails, like, you know? Yeah. Like, I just don't like being. <laughs> I just Fair don't love those games very much. Like, well, not, I, not every game needs to be like that, you know. Yeah, and not every game needs to be open world, right? Or, or do True. You create your own adventure because that kills people as well. Yeah, but like, I like a game where I can kind of do as what I want. Even though I always True. reach a point where I'm like, man, I don't know what to do anymore. I'm like, what should I do? I can't bother next game. But like, I like having that option. I, I don't right. know. It's just horses for courses, right? <laughs> courses for horses, whatever. <laughs> Well, look, if, if that game did interest anyone, trust me, I, yeah. I think it's a lot of fun, um, especially if you're looking for a, let's call it a Souls-like game yeah. it looks that mad. is much more forgiving. It looks mad. It kind of looks like God of War. You're kind of right. It's, it's yeah, in a lot of ways, it's more similar way, to those styles of action RPGs. Combat. Yeah, I, I think that's a pretty good comparison. Um, especially if you like exploring and you like finding secrets. Mm. Like, there's no quest log, so you'll find a character that will say something and you've got to just do the quest and keep a track of everything. Mm. It's very similar to an Elden Ring in that regard, but way easier to not F everything up. That's yeah. the one thing about Elden Ring, man, that still screws with me to this day. I hate how you just can completely ruin a quest line because yeah. you did it in the wrong order. But you see, like... I like that as well. And I may be biased because I played all the other Dark Souls and they've always been like that. But yeah, I true. love but I love how that like the way you play the game and the way you interact with NPCs and the choices you make during those things, like whether you talk to him four times instead of three or whatever. You again, <laughs> you're creating your yeah. narrative. So it's like my end game is gonna be different to your end game because you didn't talk to some chick in act two or whatever. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you get entirely different endings become open and close to you based on your interactions with others. And uh, I like that. I always have. Well, if you like that, bloody play Shadow of the Earth Tree because it does exactly that. I should. I'm still not <laughs> I'm still not there. You know, like perfect segue on what I've been doing. Yeah, go so, on. <laughs> I've been playing Valheim the last few days. Yeah. Valheim, such a good survival game, right? 
Um, you playing, mentioned it. Yeah. We've been playing hardcore Valheim. I died right. twice today and lost all my skills and all my all my armor, and I'm pretty having a break, <laughs> having a break, like a rage quit a little bit. But it's it's really cool. It's really cool. Mm. Got like got my little fort. It's looking pretty. I got a dock. It's mad. It's like the sense of exploration and just grinding away and like preparation for for journeys. Like it really yeah. does hit that survival exploration itch. I think mm. better than any other game does. Any other survival game does. I think mm. it's it's fantastic. And there's combat involved. Not the greatest combat, but not terrible either. Yeah. So I've been doing that. Um, By the way, before you move on, if you die, you lose all your stuff, but do you keep your, your house and everything? That's all that's all there? The world's the same. So like I, I okay. respawn in my house like as a new character, but at least I've got a house, right? <laughs> At least there's that. All right, that's, like, that's silver fine. silver linings, like, but it makes <laughs> it makes combat sketchy because you don't want to lose your best gear because then True. you got to go get got to go back and get it again. It's um, and you don't want to lose all your skills because there's a, there's a bit yeah. of a difference between like. Can you not store the best items though? <clears throat> you can, but then you need them. You need the best items. Mm. Okay, okay, but um, there's that, and I've been also thinking about jumping into. Hardcore Iron Man RuneScape. Thinking about it, Pete comments are going. To, where's like the gamers in in the comment section are going to go mental? But yeah, I'm thinking <laughs> about making a return. It's only been like twenty something years, dude. Far out. But I feel like Hardcore Iron Man, and then purposely building myself a pure to go PKing is. Mm. I can only imagine the adrenaline that'll be running through me <laughs> when I lose my character of like tens of hours, <laughs> like because I was PvPing in the in the wildy. I, I I can't wait. That's the only reason why I want to do it. You are such a sucker for punishment, bro. Genuinely, I, I've realised the more I keep playing these types of games, the worse it's getting as well, dude. Like <laughs> I I didn't think I was a sucker for punishment, but nah, I'm starting to become a bit of a masochist. Like I'm only having fun when the thrill of losing everything is there i don't know it's like it's like a gambling addict but for games now (laughs) but it's great dude it's so much i don't know your because like for instance valheim i'm usually such a min maxer right that i have to min max from the from the dot of like getting resources building things that i need running through areas like Elden Ring, for instance, I'll run through a lot of the areas just naked speed running the areas because right. I know where the items are and I want to get them now. So before I'm before I'm level two, I'm already like in the castle getting getting stuff, you know what I mean? Whatever it's called. Yeah. Um and not the first castle, not Storm, whatever it's called. Like the big city. The big city, whatever that's yeah. called. Can't top of my head, can't think of it. But yeah, I'm like I'm already trying to get items there, right? Just because I can, because uh, I'm uh, min max. But like when when it survival, like when you know your character's gone for good, mm. you take a whole new approach. It's just slow and steady, so you smell the roses a bit more. Everything is just on edge. All your preparation is like so much better. It's like you need to make sure you've got your potions, you've got your escape tools, your escape mm. plans are out. Can't leave any enemy behind you because he's got. He'll be there if he's waiting for you when you're trying to get out. I just like that. And that transfers over to every game that has a hardcore in it. There was another yeah. game I was thinking about playing that was hardcore. I was thinking about downloading the mod for Elden Ring hardcore. Really? Like, yeah. Just because. What I, does it I, do? It makes it so your character dies when like, he's gone forever when you die. I don't know. I'm just really enjoying it. But I then, mean, you could they, just pro- do that yourself without the mod, right? You could just. Delete your character if you die. Yeah, but you you do get burnt. I do get burnt out because I'm no I'm no god at video games. So mm. like, I make mistakes. I get lazy. I come back tired after training and then kill a dude by accident because I'm not switched on that I've put yeah. twenty hours in. You know, that's fair. And, yeah, and then I'm burnt out. Then I have to change games. But I know I'm I'm, I'm thinking about playing. You ever play RuneScape? Were you ever RuneScape, dude? I was never into RuneScape, no. Okay, I have well, friends that are super into it still to this day. Bro, I got friends that are still playing RuneScape now. Like, Crazy. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, you know what? It's funny. I actually tried logging into it because uh, I've had the same 
email address or whatever forever, right? So yeah. I tried logging in. <laughs> he goes, you have been suspended for unduly contact. And I'm like, <laughs> what? I was like looking it up like, when did this happen? It was like 2008 or something. <laughs> so, so I – What did you I, do? I oh, no idea, dude. I put it, I put it, I put it in an appeal straight away. I was like, please, I don't remember anything. I'm t- I've matured. <laughs> I've changed. Let, let me back in. <laughs> So I don't know if I'll get him back or whatever, but I don't know. It's all changed. Apparently, you can create multiple characters on an on an account now. So I don't know what's going on. That is the funniest story yeah, I think you've told me. I, think, I want to know what you did now. I know. I was probably just been toxic, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> to, like, yeah. Look, yeah, uh, get used to get toxic back in the day. <laughs> far out. I'm sure it did. Yeah, but I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. All right. All right. Before we move on to the to the viewer questions, do you know what I have been smashing out and I've been enjoying it? I know you're, you're not a big fan of shooters, but I got back into Black Ops 6 with the beta. Dude, I, I'm getting that feeling again. I used to love like uh, Modern Warfare and the original Black Ops, especially zombies, but playing in the beta, just doing like Team Deathmatch and Domination and other modes, it's just fun, man. Mm. It, it They have this new omnidirectional movement system where you can like leap and jump forward and back and side to side uh that feels really smooth barely any issues like i I feel like the game is pretty fair as well it seems pretty balanced right now the only issue that i have with it is that like sometimes when you're aiming and you're hugging up against the wall do you know how some shooters they'll force you into a position where you're kind of like hiding behind the wall and you're aiming like it's a different type of animation and sometimes it feels like i get stuck in that animation when i don't want to move in that way that's the only gripe that i have with it because it's happened a couple of times and maybe i can disable it but aside from that i'm having a blast man i can't wait for this full thing to come out because i want to smash free for all i want to smash zombies it's so much fun bro I got into get, I got into shooters. Remember, with, for a little bit there, I was playing a lot of Fortnite with the friends. Got everyone, got everyone back onto it. Yeah, I was playing with my kids, but then it, it was making my kids crazy. <laughs> like the family, <laughs> it was it was ruining my my family. <laughs> like like we're Monopoly, all, we're all fighting over loot and drops, <laughs> and I had to I had to put it on on hiatus for a bit. So there's there's currently a ban in the house for shooters. Wow. <laughs> So maybe maybe we're not mature yet enough for it. <laughs> but the whole thing playing Fortnite <laughs> like with your friends or family is that you share loot. You're a team. Yeah, I'm not in this household, mate. <laughs> so every man for himself. And I'm like, I'm like, Jack, give me the sniper rifle. I'm better. <laughs> and he's like, no, he's running off. And my my other son's just who knows what he's doing. He's like in his own car driving around the other side yeah. of the map, just cruising, dude, having his best life. It's mad. But Dude. yeah, we've had to put a ban on it. I, I, I have a friend that I used to play a lot of Borderlands with, and the original Borderlands games didn't let you, let you share loot. So if there was one weapon, there was one weapon, and whoever got it, got it, right? And and the way that we did it, we're like, well, I'm this character, I'm this type of build. If there's a good sniper rifle, you take it. If there's a good whatever, I'll take it. Um, but they changed that mechanic, I think, with Borderlands 3, where everybody gets the same mm. loot. And oh. I felt like that was a good way to go about it because it means no more fighting. I right? forget... I don't know if you ever played it, but it was like an old PS2 game called mm. Champions of Narath. It's funny I've that I remember it, that I remember the game. But if you, it, it was one of those split screen kind of Baldur's Gate two sort of games. Okay. And like you'd pop a chest, and me and my brother would be spamming square as hard as we can. <laughs> like, and then it, it got to a point like we literally punched on a couple of times because Legit. like yeah because he he like would loot a piece of gear that I wanted so bad. Because like vice versa, it, it got really bad. Yeah, hit us up in the comments if you've done the same thing. If you guys remember that game, I can't believe I remember the name. But uh, it I'm like, impressed. Wow, Look, a- any game where there's a sharing of loot mechanic, if you've had an interaction like that, let us know and let us know <laughs> what the game is because I'm curious now. But finally, we have the viewer questions. As always, if you have any questions for us in the podcast, let us know in the comments below. But first up, we have Tremble007, new MMA fan here. Is the purpose to win the fight or look good doing it or both ideally? Genuine question. And I have, I have a feeling this question is kind of related to the fact that a lot of fighters get the good fights when they have exciting knockouts and when they have exciting fights. And the boring fighters, they have to really work hard for it. Like, say a Bilal Muhammad. I have a feeling that's where the question is directed. 
So what do you think, bro? Mate, I would dry hump a dude to death if it got me the win, <laughs> you know. But uh, it's like I'm just better at throwing hands than I am okay, at, fair. at that style. I think my my idea is like the purpose is to win and mm. uh, at all costs. Yeah, that that that's it for me. Like just just win mm. horribly. horribly. That's all right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's so it cute. It's in, it is. It's, it's in the trophy room on the top where the bucket is. Trophy Yeah, trophy room. <laughs> you, have a tro- you have a trophy room? Oh, it's more storage than anything. <laughs> we just call it the trophy room because there's a couple of trophies in there. Well, I was going to say, why isn't your belt in the trophy room? Wouldn't that make more sense? I get it. You want to have it for the podcast. Yeah, it, but... it looks better there. It's in the office. Um, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, my, my idea is just to win at all costs. Like, that's it. Right. Okay. There. Yeah, that's All it. Right. In from my mentality, I know it's not every fighter's mentality. I know some mm. fighters would rather look good than win. Mm. You know, but no. Well, ideally, look good and win, right? Yeah, ideally. Um, but yeah, I, I thought that was a good question given the climate of everything. But next up, it's at slope underscore me. Rob, you and Shamai have essentially have had two training camps to train for each other. How do you think this will play a factor, if at all? Will you keep the same game plan and refine that, or will you have an entirely different strategy now that you've had more time to focus on the same opponent? Thanks. No, it's it's I mean it's a lucky in a sense because I get two camps for the same dude, so I've had twice mm. as much wrestling practice, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, same game plan. Just got to get strong, got to get fit, and just yeah. get there and rip in. Has there ever been an opponent, by the way, where you've trained this much in wrestling for? Yeah. Yeah, heaps. Heaps of them. Heaps of them. This much, though, to this extent? Because I yeah. feel like this has been different for you. Well, because, like, the less wrestling that I knew, the more ground there was to cover, right? Fair. So, like, I had to learn how to wrestle, like, defend the takedowns with Jacare. Mm. You know, can you imagine if you got my back to the ground? Yeah, true. Like, I had to learn how to stop takedowns with Yol Romero. I was going to say his name, yeah. <laughs> like, I had to learn how to stop wrestling with Derek Brunson. <laughs> Like, yeah, like those, those three dudes are like really high level wrestlers, mm. like really high level. But then yeah. everyone would have taken me down if they could have. Like it's it's yeah, got to train all your skills to perfection, mate, or yeah. close close to it. Next question at Joey Arizola: What games are you going to play during your Abu Dhabi trip? Hmm. I want to say Valheim, but like I may burn out before I even get there. Like I, still I like, think you're going to burn I out. I still got like eight weeks. <laughs> yeah. Of camp left, so I don't know. We'll have to wait and see where we're at. But I do have games in the pocket still. Like, like I said, I got Shadow, mm. Shadow the Earth Tree, still just sitting there, mate. If I pick up this Runescape, I'm pretty sure I'll be playing it still at that point. Because Runescape <laughs> is a lifestyle, not not a game, man. <laughs> Dude, I wouldn't be surprised if by the time you get to Abu Dhabi, you, you've you've mentioned name dropped this random ass name of a game I've never even heard of, Probably. and then that's going to be your go to. Happens, happens. <laughs> Next up is from at Mitch G five eight oh nine. Would Rob play as, as himself in UFC five, or would he make a custom character and try to make it himself? I always make a custom character. Always hey, in UFC just, games. Never yeah, plays yourself. Never, never. Because like I like I like building like dudes that are stupidly strong, like <laughs> dumb levels of massive, and I just take people down in hammer fist. That's all I do. <laughs> Uh, the, the last time I played a <laughs> UFC game was probably UFC 2, I want to say, maybe. And What's like, the latest, latest one that just came out? I don't know. There was one when Brock Lesnar was still like killing people because oh, yeah. Brock Lesnar was like, you just take people down, hammer fist people, and they get knocked out. So I made a goo that all he did was <laughs> for training was like tire flips. <laughs> yeah. And I just take people down and hammer fist them. It was the best. I loved it. I love that. That's so funny, bro. And finally, at, at from Alexis with an E, thank you for changing your username, by the way. What is a total irrational fear that you have kept since childhood? Mine is still being afraid of the dark, although it's not as bad anymore. Irrational fear. Like, I have fears, but something that's irrational, that's a hard one. Do you have anything wrong? Mm. Yeah, nah. I've thrown a curveball I'm question like, at the end. I'm like super tough and stuff, eh? Like, <laughs> like actually not afraid of anything oh bull crap you mate. have an irrational fear mate i have fear of some sort Donata. really yeah nothing at all no 
You were never scared of the dark or of heights or of deep water. But it, but it said that you've kept. I haven't kept anything. I've got okay. No, well, I've what, got what have brave. you dropped then? I was scared of spiders. Terrified of them. You still no? Hold on, hold on. Don't give me this bull crap. I saw that video yeah. with you and Sophia yeah. with that spider. Yeah, there was a little bit of fear in you. No, all right. Someone will find the link. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that was like six years ago. I'm over it now. Oh, dude, like Denada, you said that you dropped it all when you were a kid. No, That's still you and as an adult no, six kept, years ago. I don't have it. No, I wasn't an adult. I'm an adult now. <laughs> By the way, that, that was the funniest video. What, what, I remember what, what, you were like. <laughs> oh, dude, do you know how big funnel webs are? <laughs> I'm aware. I like, live in Australia. They are yeah. so big. Like it is so much different to seeing them in person. Like you can't <laughs> step on them. They're massive. They like, are. It is, like, and you know that if you get bitten, you're done. <laughs> like, true. True. Like, and they're aggressive, dude. They're aggressive. Okay. Didn't you like, you had like a, a mat, which like you train on a roll yeah, on was, and you use that. It was a to jigsaw it. mat that I threw on it so he couldn't see me. And then I did like, the, like I did like the samba on his head. Like, and you know what? It's not even fear. It's not even irrational. It's not irrational. It's a, it's fear, completely rational. Fear of, I, yeah. <laughs> fear of a huge funnel web. It's just <laughs> like common sense it's just it's a very reasonable you know tendency of like just trying to you know weariness of weariness yeah. what about it would you? be stupid if you weren't please tell scared me. of, of please, spiders please tell me you're still scared of the dark please I was never. I was never scared of the dark. I need this. <laughs> Why are you there? I, I need this. No, no, I I, need hand it. on my heart no the dark was never something that I was scared of no uh, uh I, I don't know. I get, I've had fears like you. I don't know what I've like kept to this oh, day, though. I know something that still scares me, dude. Mm-hmm. That scared me back then, scares me now. Like being out in the middle of the ocean at nighttime. Oh, dude, that's like, scary. That idea, yeah. The idea of being in the ocean at nighttime, like when you can't see the bottom, yeah. oh, that's terrifying. I don't mm. know if that's irrational, but I feel like that's rational as well. <laughs> well have, have you ever been put in that situation? No, nah, but like, you know, when you're, you're on a boat or you're flying over it and you just see that dark water yeah. and you just you just know there's some deep, dark things down there that you, you want no part of. The ocean's scary, man. The ocean is terrifying. Yeah. You know? I'm actually struggling to come up with something that I'm still fearful of to this day. So you're making fun of me for being... No, because I'm not Mr. Old, I'm old, old, old concrete for breakfast over here. <laughs> <laughs> it just has, has nothing as well. So, dude. <laughs> no, it's more that my memory sucks and, and I'm struggling <clears throat> to think of things. That, like, on a day to day basis, I don't know what I'm like scared of. I don't know. Mm. No, m- maybe it used to be a commitment, but now I'm married. So it's not that anymore. Mm, I'm trying to think of it. I, I will I will say this, right? Heights still get me a little bit. And and I've and I've been skydiving and bungee jumping and everything, but you still can't I still can't at least get rid of that that tingling sensation in your stomach just before that jump. I remember when uh, I was in New Zealand. Have you ever been to the Canyon Swing? I think it's in in Wellington. And the, they do a number of things like they, they hook you up and like you can jump off however you want. So the first time I jumped off, I did like a flip. It was cool and, and it was totally fine. The next time that I jumped off, they're like, all right, what I want you to do is just kind of go down, like hug your knees and then just look down and jump. Just look straight down and jump. And that was the most terrifying thing in my life. The whole, the, the backflip, not scary. That was, I was petrified because you're looking down the whole time mm. and your stomach just sinks. And it's, that was Oh man, never again. Mm. That was scary. That was genuinely scary. Yeah, I can so maybe that. a little bit of heights. It, it, is that good enough for you? I don't know. No. I think like jumping off like a ten-story building is pretty rational, <laughs> as well, right? <laughs> it's a good point. Rational versus irrational. So, yeah. I don't know. Well, well, I have a think about it, and for the next podcast, I'll come up with a better <laughs> answer. But that is episode fifty of yep. the MM Arcade podcast at fifty minutes too. I know, I know. I, know. I, was, I was telling Johnny like this is going to be like an easy 35, 40 minute. <laughs> this is the thing, and we're talking about this before. If Rob's like, I only have time to do X amount of minutes, I will pace the podcast so it is X amount of minutes. You know what I mean? We've gotten pretty good at that. Yeah, but, yeah. I don't know. We're just going rants, but 
Yeah, and this episode was mostly about games, which, to be fair, was a nice change of pace. It's the best. But Rob, as always, closing words for the podcast, let us say. Again, thank you to everybody that has subscribed. We're seeing our numbers. They are going up. I want yeah. that that plaque they send you in the mail. I need that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need this. 100K. <laughs> yeah, I need this. But uh, thank you, guys. I, 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 read, I read the comments in, in every episode. You guys are so... I don't know it's just it's just comforting to see you guys just talking amongst yourself, creating a community and a fan yeah. base for the cast, for myself, for Johnny, and just yeah, you know, a lot of you guys just having conversation amongst yourself. It's so cool to see. It really is so cool to see. We're all on the same team here, and yeah. thank you, thank you very much for fifty episodes. Thank you, everyone, and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Peace. <laughs>